Hey yo, what's poppin' YouTube? It's King Brew coming at you again with another video. And today, we got a very interesting topic. I get so many questions asking, did you really get a relaxer? What can I do if I get a texturizer? Can I reverse it? And if you get a perm, what does that exactly mean for your hair, man? Today we're talking about texturizer slash relaxer slash perm. And if you ever had either of those three, what that means for your hair, should you get it? Why shouldn't you get the pros and cons, the whole nine, all right? So strap up, it's gonna be a great video. And today you're gonna learn something. But before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that this video is gonna be a little funny. It's gonna be a little energetic. It's gonna be a little nerdy, but it's gonna have a whole lot of science. So for this video, we are gonna have to put on the glasses. And now, my brothers, we are ready. Let's get to it. And understand, when it comes to putting chemicals in your hair, there are levels to these chemicals, all right? There are levels, all right? At the very top are the natural hair dyes, you know, the very light dyes, the dyes that aren't too far from your original color. So if you got black hair and you go to brown, that might not be as harsh of a dye, but it's still chemicals, but it's not that harsh. Right under that, you have what's called a texturizer, all right? A texturizer is basically the same thing, but it's a little bit heavier. Right under the texturizer, we have the relaxer, and right under relaxers, we have flat out perms, all right? Flat out perms. Perms are the most intense chemical that you can put in your hair. Do not get a perm. Do not get a perm if you want curls. So we need to go over what actually happens when you expose your hair to chemicals. So I want you to imagine a hair strand, you guys. Now, there's a protein called keratin that makes up the very fabric, the very fiber of your hair. And this protein called keratin is made up of three amino acids. The first being salt, the second being hydrogen, and the third being disulfide. And these amino acids are bonded together to create the protein called keratin. So the first two bonds, salt and hydrogen, are very weak bonds, all right? You can easily break these two amino acid bonds simply by adding water in your hair, simply by changing the pH level in your hair, shampoo, simply by adding heat to your hair or exposing your hair to any type of warm environment. You even break the salt and hydrogen bonds when you use products. So for example, when you use the Ridge Royals Deep Conditioner and when you use the Ridge Royals Core Cream, available at ridgeworlds.com, you are actually breaking the salt and hydrogen bonds from the amino acid within the keratin within your hair, also you can get fire curls. Now the thing about breaking salt and hydrogen bonds, the bond breakage is only temporary, so no matter what, no matter how good the cream is, no matter how great the conditioner is, no matter how consistent you are, it is going to go back to normal at some point in time. Those salt and hydrogen bonds are eventually gonna go back to how they were. Now, if you're very consistent with your hair regimen, then that time might be extended, but eventually, eventually, they're gonna come back together and you're gonna have to do everything all over again, all right? Now, disulfide can only be broken by the chemicals that we mentioned at the beginning of this video because it is the strongest bond. It makes up the very fabric of every keratin inside of your hair cell and it is largely determined by genetics. And because disulfide is literally the strongest bond, it's the most important bond in your keratin. It is largely to blame or to thank for the curls, the structure of your hair. Now, when you apply any chemical to your hair, you are effectively breaking the disulfate bonds. And once you break these disulfate or alter these disulfate bonds with chemicals, you are no longer natural. And in my opinion, you should never expose your hair to chemical. Didn't you just drop a video that said, you know, I went viral because I got a perm? I'm sorry, because you got clickbaited. I'm sorry, but I did it only to teach you. When you break these bonds, your curl pattern gets looser and looser and looser, all right? So someone that has 4C has different bonds than somebody with 3A. But when somebody with 4C adds a texturizer, their hair texture can very much resemble somebody that has a 3A. And I know a lot of you guys out there are like, well, sh that's what happens with chemicals? That's it? Well, shoot, sign me up. I'm ready to put chemicals in my hair. I'm trying to look like him over there, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get the big curls, you know what I'm saying? Hold up, bruh. There are two huge problems, two huge issues, two huge complications that come along with changing your hair texture. When you add these chemicals to your hair, they will change the texture of all the hair that is on your head. 
However, the new hair that grows on your scalp will be your genetic texture, the original texture. Your disulfate bonds will be the same as they were when you were birthed out your mother's womb, which means you will be potentially walking around with two different textures, all right? You're gonna have an afro at the bottom and a jerry curl at the top once your hair grows out a couple months. And to be quite honest, that looks foolish to me. You can either walk around with the afro at the bottom and a jerry curl at the top or or you can run smack dab into problem number two when you choose to apply that same chemical to the afro at the bottom so that all your hair is the same texture now everything might be peachy cream when you hit the new hair with that same chemical but realize that to hit the new hair with the chemical you must then again hit the old hair that's already been chemicalized with the chemicals Basically, you're putting texturizer on the same piece of hair twice. It's gonna make that hair very, very weak over time. And when your hair gets weak, I shouldn't have to tell you what comes next, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, your hair stays the same length. And worst of all, once you've broken that disulfate bond down four or five times, you will have taken your hair for what might have been a 4C to a 3A to a 2A to a 1A. And now you got an afro at the bottom, you got curls in the middle of your hair, and you got just straight hair pointing straight up at the top of your hair. You got four different curl textures, and you don't know what cream can help. And now you on my channel in my comments saying, King Brill saved me. Well, guess what? You can't. There's no going back because you've broken your dissect because you, there's no going back. I'm sorry, that was a little extreme. There's actually rumors and some scientific studies that say protein treatments can help rebuild some disulfate bonds back, but as for the bulk of them, it's gone forever, bruh. So in my Google educated opinion, I advise none of you guys, none of y'all that want curls, that really want curls, that really are invested in your hair journey. If you want long hair, if you want your hair to grow, do not, use chemicals but no seriously you guys if you have any questions comments or concerns make sure you leave them down in the comment box make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you know the next time i drop some more fire content so you can watch and be educated about your hair and if you're looking for any chemical free chemical free natural hair products for you that will temporarily break the salt and hydrogen bonds and get your hair to where you want it to be make sure you guys check out richroyals.com that being said it's king brill Peace.